I'm a physiotherapist and during the next years my mission is to improve the value of the research. To reach this goal, with my research is I would like to provide scientific and professional specific information to my colleagues. We conducted three different studies to focus on the main parts of this disease. The first one is about the prevalence and characteristics of cardiovascular abnormalities in this disease. Three to six weeks after COVID-19 infection, children can develop a multisystem inflammatory response. The main problem, one of the main problems with this disease is that more than 75% of the children will experience some kind of cardiovascular problem during their hospitalization. Luckily, in most cases, these changes are normalized at discharge, but sometimes they can remain and become long-term morbidities. As a physiotherapist, it is really important to know if we should expect any kind of cardiovascular problem either in the hospitalization time or either long time, because it can influence the whole treatment process for us. Uh, to answer our question, we focused on the main <coughs> cardiovascular manifestations and to determine their prevalences. We conducted a systematic search with this search key in three different databases and got an overall 113 eligible full text. We have a huge number of outcomes, therefore today I would like to present the three most important ones. These outcomes including laboratory findings, uh, intensive therapeutic needs and also radiographical abnormalities. The first one is the put proportion of coronary artery aneurysm which means the abnormal size change of any of the coronary arteries. We use the American Heart Association Z-score classification system and included five studies. Uh, using the random effects model, um, the data from more than 200 children resulted in a pooled proportion of 11%. For comparison, you can see the rate of Kawasaki disease, which is around 22%. Therefore, we can say, based on these results, um, MISC children uh, tend in MISC children, coronary artery aneurysm tend to be lower rate. Our second outcome is uh, connected to the left ventricular dysfunction. We use the term called action fraction, which represents the amount of blood being pumped out from the left ventricle. We set the cutoff value to 35% containing the moderate and severe dysfunction of the left ventricle. After analyzing again more than 200 patients' data, we get a pooled proportion rate of 6.8%. Therefore, we can say around 7% of the children who get uh, hospitalized with MISC will experience severe heart failure. Our last outcome is uh, the pooled proportion rate of ICU admission. We included several articles with a, uh, with a high heterogeneity. And uh, after analyzing more than 4,000 children's data, we got an overall pooled proportion rate of 45.8%. Uh, Just for comparison, in case of pediatric COVID-19, it's 10 times lower than our results. Therefore, it's a very serious and life-threatening complication of uh, COVID-19. Uh, just for uh, um, summary, we were able to cover the most important parts of the disease spectrum with a high number of our outcomes and we were also able to make a separate analysis for ICU admitted children in case of some outcomes. And uh, the biggest limitation is that the papers are from the first and second wave of COVID-19 pandemic, therefore we were able to show the consequences of only certain variants. As an overall conclusion, children can present a broad range of cardiac outcomes and findings, and based on our results, the most uh, common abnormalities are mitral regurgitation, left ventricular dysfunction, myocarditis, and tricuspidal regurgitation. Based on our results, we recommend early cardiology consultation, and uh, beside the cardiac evaluation, physiotherapeutic assessment and treatment could be useful for these children. I would like to highlight the high number of asymptomatic COVID cases we previous, uh, we, which was mentioned previously. Uh, therefore, we keep it important, the proper public information process for caregivers and also healthcare professionals uh, in relation of MISC2. As an implication for research, we need an international um, registry to collect the data about these children and some further investigations to find uh, more associations. 
I'm happy to announce that yesterday we submitted our meta-analysis to the JAM Open Network, and now it's under review. Our second project is a registry analysis. We would like to assess the Hungarian MISC children population. Uh, this disease mainly affects children between 5 to 14 years with um, around 60 percentage of ICU admission rate. In the literature, the long-term complications number are rising, but also uh, this disease remains uh, severe with a stable clinical presentation regardless of the variant. Therefore, we would like to assess the characteristics of the Hungarian MISC children. To do, we would like uh, to make a descriptive analysis uh, based on this uh, registry focusing on the descriptive data like age, gender, or BMI, also uh, collecting data about IVIG and steroid usage and mortality. And with these results, we would like to better understand of this disease. Um, the CTM registry, wa the registry was um, established in 2020 in the Heimpal National Pediatric Institute. I would like to show you some preliminary results uh, from the first 29 patients. Median age of, was 11 years with a slight male dominance. ICU admission rate was around 55 percentage and there was a high steroid and IVIG use usage among these children. We also asked the caregivers and patients to estimate the time period of feeling healthy again. Uh, I would like, oh, it's not working, but uh, I would like to highlight that around 40% of these children needed less a month or approximately a month to feel healthy again. And unfortunately, six from the 24 children needed at least more than uh, six or more than six months. We also uh, discussed what were the long-term complications. It included fatigue, headache, and some gastrointestinal problems. And our last uh, study is um, an international multicenter survey about the physiotherapeutic practice in the pediatric COVID-19 disease and also in MISC. There is still a gap uh, among our um, knowledge related to physiotherapy. There are still just a low number of physiotherapy-related scientific articles in this topic, and only a few available therapeutic guidelines, but none of them discussing the physiotherapeutic treatment options related to this disease. Therefore, we would like to assess the physiotherapeutic care either in uh, Hungary and in abroad to find any similarities and discrepancies uh, between the hospitals and between the therapeutic we prepared our questionnaire. This is the structure. It contains three main question groups. And uh, the last one is the most uh, interesting one about the physiotherapeutic care, like the time point of the first visit, frequency and duration of these visits, any used devices, techniques, or assessment tools, and also follow-up options, if possible, for them. Currently, we are working on international consensus. We find several um, experts in this topic, and now we would like to invite them to discuss uh, our questionnaire uh, via Zoom during July and to establish some, in some international contributions. <coughs> and just for a quick overview with the planned uh, submission dates, and based on our results, we can comprehensively assess when and how can a physiotherapist help to these children. Some of my additional activities, I also work at the Heimpal National Pediatric Institute as a physiotherapist. And I would like to thank you for your attention and please feel free to ask if you have any questions. A short uh, quote from Confucius, the man who moves a mountain begins by carrying away small stones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just, I just had a personal experience about manual therapy. Yes, painful, but working. So are you using any kinds of manual therapy for children with MISC? Because at our cohort, I've heard of uh, manual therapy with uh, patients with dyspnea, 
they they tried it and it worked for long COVID patients. What are your experiences if you have any? It's a very good question and a very good suggestion. We should. Uh, just you mentioned this to me. These intercostal muscles can be very, uh, can be in a spastic uh, condition and manual therapy could be very useful to release these muscles and also with this we could increase the mobility of the chest. So yes, yes definitely because would. I was just astonished that I don't, I didn't really know anything about manual therapy and, and I think we should learn a lot more about it to, to use it in our daily practice. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, my question is concerned the first project. Like you mentioned several times, Kawasaki disease. Right, mind me see the white, what, what are the main differences uh, between the two entities or similarities? Thank you very much for your question. Um, yes, I mentioned Kawasaki disease because when uh, MISC appeared, Kawasaki disease was. Uh, mostly the closest disease uh, for, to MISC and also um, in case of cardiovascular problems um, international literature started to use the American Heart Association's guideline which is uh, for Kawasaki disease but it can could be adapted to MISC too. Uh, regarding it, they have some similarities like uh, high fever, um, dermatologic features and also conjunctivities, but the main difference between them, Kawasaki disease is um, systemic vasculitis and MISC is a, a virus triggered post-inflammatory response. In case of MISC you see mostly myocardial dysfunction and in case of Kawasaki disease uh, mainly coronary artery abnormalities. Thank you. So, as I see in your second study, you reported your age in uh, median and interquartile range. And it's connecting to your meta analysis, so it could be a problem that in some cases, uh, for the same outcome, some, the report, some studies report medians and some studies report means. Uh, how could you handle this situation? Yes, thank you very much for your question. Um, to tell the truth, my statistician Tamaj made an excellent work. He um, made separate analysis uh, in case of laboratory parameters for um, means and medians, and he also calculated estimated means from medians and pooled them with the readily available means. So we made different analysis in case of every variable. Congratulations for your presentation. Um, as a physio, you showed us in your meta-analysis several cardiovascular complications. And my question is, as we don't know much about your work as physicians, uh, which one uh, of these complications influence your everyday work and how can you target these conditions? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, unfortunately, all of uh, the previously mentioned uh, problems can influence my work um, in, with a ne negative impact. To choose one, maybe I would go for the myocardial dysfunction or the left ventricular dysfunction. These children can experience fatigue and also dyspnea uh, in cases uh, the act to go to out to the bathroom or um, walk for a couple of minutes can be very exhausting. So um, I would choose that. And also we should uh, differentiate that it's an acute uh, period or it's a long-term uh, period with remaining uh, symptoms like uh, huge coronary aneurysm. All of them can uh, limit our therapy. Based on your uh, preliminary results in your second project, uh, do you see some uh, important differences between your population, your patients, and the international ones? Thank you very much. It's still a very nice question. Uh, we previously discussed this topic with the hospital's cardiologist, and our conclusion was that our population showed 
maybe a less severe um, disease course and uh, behind of this phenomenon, possibly the high rate and uh, early initiation of the IVIG therapy can be, and also international therapeutic guidelines uh, recommend um, the complex usage of corticosteroids and IVIG as a first line therapy. So, uh, a less severe, but still a very high rate of ICU admission. We have to work on this. Yeah, one general note again that we all hate deadlines, but when we have a deadline, finally we finish actually the, the, what is our duty. So I mean, I see that you are not the only one. I mean, there is a couple of other fellows actually who submitted in the last minute, but last minute is much better than before. So, so it, it, it confirms that we all hate deadlines, but there must be head, uh, deadlines because this is as we are, I mean, the things progressing. Uh, con congratulations to the whole work. Uh, whole work. Uh, but these preliminary results, I mean, quite interesting because I mean, time period of, of, of feeling healthy again, I mean, this is, this is one more thing which shows actually personalized medicine is needed because, I mean, different patients, no matter whether that's a physical exercise, that's a pill, that's a whatever, I mean, that, that the, the response is quite different and uh, actually, I mean, time is one of the factors. So do you, do you actually do this kind of follow-ups yourself or this is a group of people and, and, and the, then can you... Ha, can you say something about this, that what, what is the difference between healed in one month and healed in tw over 12 months or so? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, unfortunately, currently we are not providing physiotherapeutic follow-up for MISC children in the hospital, but uh, physiotherapy is a very subjective um, kind of therapy, therefore, we are still in the phase when uh, we are working on how to find objective measures and values to present. And yes, uh, this was just a short uh, interview with the patients about uh, their subjective uh, quality of life and uh, quality of health uh, parameters.